Hey everyone, how are you? This is yours truly, Triple G, coming at you live from beautiful Burbank, Southern California. A little chilly here this morning for Southern California, but it is what it is. I am here at a relatively new but very exciting looking guitar company called Legator. Uh, it, located in Burbank, California, right here in Southern California. And I ran into these guys walking the hall at 2013 Winter Name about 10 months ago. And I saw a uh, very renowned Korean guitar player just hanging out at their booth. Uh, obviously, I recognized him and I kind of stopped by to take a look at their guitars and some phenomenal looking stuff. I've been pursuing this man for the last several months to kind of get together to kind of bring you guys more in-depth information about their guitars. We finally hooked up, so I am here on location. Um, I'll pass it on to Adam now. Adam Romine from Legator. Tell us who you are, man. Thanks for coming in, brother. I'm Adam with uh, Legator. I do A&R marketing here. Um, Legator started off about two years ago, and as he was saying, debuted this winter at the NAMM show. Um, Legator, the definition, we'll start with that, is a uh, one who seeks legacy. We wanted to really create a brand that in, uh, capsu encapsulates the the the, the average guitar player, the guy who wants to you know, pick a guitar up and sees himself on stage, really just you know, rocking out or you know, doing, you know, playing the, his guitar to the best of, of his capability. And we want to you know, provide a, a guitar for each level of player, whether he's a beginning player, an advanced player, a professional you know, studio and touring musician. So we really wanted to you know, encapsulate this, into, this entirety into our brand here. Awesome, man. Hey, uh, so you know, once I got to know the name, I kind of started to look into it. Obviously, because I might, I, I was thinking I might want one of these guitars. And um, what I found out since then was um, both guitar players from Shadows Fall, uh, Matt Bouchon and John Donays, Donays, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but they also use Legator guitars. I think both of them, uh, Matt was with Ibanez previously, and John used to be with uh, ESP, and right before that, I believe he was with. BC Rich. Was it PC Rich? I thought it was a Washburn. But it doesn't matter because that, that's not where he's in anymore. And John, uh, um, you guys I'm sure know, but now is uh, filling in uh, the vacant spot left by Rob Caggiano in Anthrax. And John's the touring member of Anthrax right now. And when he's on stage, he's wielding one of these things from Legator. Uh, so, you know, as far as credibility and kind of uh, endorsement wise, you definitely see some credibility from their line. And uh, what Adam uh, taught me when I walked into the facility today was they predominantly have basically three series of guitars. You got 200s, 300s, and 400s. So uh, why don't you take it away and kind of tell us what differentiates your models and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, we have uh, three different series, and uh, the 200, 300, and 400, it all depends on where they're constructed. Um, we like to, you know, have an intermediate guitar for, for your, you know, your average, uh, you know, beginner players, and then our, our 300 series, which uh, we, we use to endorse all of our pro-level guitar players, and then this year we actually introduced our 400 series, which is our Made in U.S. custom line. Uh, our custom line is going to be, you know, obviously 100%, you know, ha uh, handmade here in the U.S. Uh, we have a custom shop here in uh, Los Angeles. Um, they're going to be 100% uh, handcrafted necks it's for a, a one-of-a-kind feeling each time. Um, we really pride ourselves on what we do with our necks. And when we step down to the 300 series, which is our pro level, um, what, what we see here is a, our uh, neck through model. Um, a, a lot of companies are doing this. You'll see Ibanez and a lot of other brands that do this, but it's not really at a price point that's available to you know your average guys. Um, here, you know, this model is retailing for about a thousand dollars. It might not be, you know, uh, as as available to you know your beginning players, but to uh, you know your your guys who've been playing for a long time, they they want to see this kind of feature, and that you know it's it's easily accessible to them. For our uh, 200 series guitars, we also like to, uh, you know, focus on the necks. Uh, should I grab one of those? Oh uh, yeah, sure. Uh, while you go grab one of those, I'll give you guys a you know quick uh, up up close personal view. Look at this. Check out this headstock. What's cool about this right here is you get the matching flame maple right on the headstock that is at the body. And the neck profile is, I mean, this is a seven string guitar, so it's not something that I'm normally, normally gonna hold, but neck profile, very fast, very um, thin, 
comfortable, but there's enough meat here for you to hold on to. And then uh, looks like a five piece neck back here with the satin uh, finish. So you can, you guys that do acrobatics on a guitar neck, you guys can go up and down very easily. One thing that I actually told Adam before was, me personally, I think this paint job should go this way, not this way. Because uh, if you're up, the, up here at the upper register, by the way, area that I will never hang out in. Um, but that just seems like a little bit more natural. But what's cool is back of the body is not flat. It actually has a bevel. And therefore, your width is very narrow here, very thin guitar. But when you look at the top, it bevels again, um, almost giving you that, um, I don't want to say complete carved top, but it, your, your center block has a, a much more meat than your side. Um, the bevel gives you very comfortable forearm um, to rest on as you're playing. Um, and the fretboard just really nicely done and you look at your fret wires and there's nothing sticking out. Very smooth, the large jumbo frets that I can tell. Um, just really sharp looking guitar and look at this freaking flame maple and the color man. So uh, we'll put this one down for a minute and I'll have Adam take the uh, take over, introduce you guys, uh, I guess a 200 series Adam? This would be our 200 series, uh, seven string model as well. And like I was saying, uh, we like to emphasize on the neck features here. You'll see the same uh, satin finished neck here, uh, the, the crop at the bottom. Um, all of our neck shapes, I mean even our 200 series and 300 series, we put a lot, lot of uh, time and effort into making it really comfortable for these players. Um, with a lot of other guitars that are, are you know, for the shredders, they're, they seem to be a little too flat. You don't have a lot of play in it. You can't, you know, uh, as more like a, a classic type guitar, it's more of that baseball type feel. Uh, we try to do a hybrid of that, a thin neck that you can fly on, yet it still has that feeling. Yeah, that's what I felt. I mean, it's thin enough to really shred on, but there's enough, just enough meat for you to really hold on yeah, to, Yeah, right? exactly. And then, um, you know, for the guys to do this, in our, and this is again our 200 series, which is our entry level guitar, which retails for about $500, anywhere in, around that area. But um, this, you don't, you'll never see this on a guitar in that range. It's too difficult for guys to do. But I mean, we just go the extra mile and really put the- Much easier for painter to just spray all Yeah, exactly, that, right? to cover up any imperfections and things like that. But we just go and get the finest quality materials and, and you know, the, the hardest workers that we can. And you know, they really put the, their time and energy into these, these models. Um, you know, for, for a new company to, to really stand out, we have to, to go above and beyond, and that's what we try to do here. So, uh, besides the pickup difference between that and the 300 that we looked at earlier, uh, construction-wise, earlier the 300 was neck through, this right. is set neck. This is a set neck, set through, so it comes about halfway through the body here. Very nice. Very nice. And look. By the way, the shape that you're looking at, which is, uh, you know, for lack of a better term, we'll call it a super strat shape. Um, this is your Ninja. This is our Ninja model. model. Ninja. All of our models uh, extend from three different patented headstocks, which you'll see here, and this will encapsulate over our baseline, our eight, uh, eight string, seven string, and even our nine string model, which we have up here. <laughs> nine string. I mean, at what point does it become too much, right? Yeah. Um, all right. So um, we've looked at Ninja 200, and we looked at Ninja 300, um, and even in 300, I noticed you just have regular 300, then you have 350. Uh, 350 has the Floyd. Whenever we add a 50 to our 100 series, whether it be uh, 200 to 250 or 300 to 350, anytime we add the 50, that means we're adding a, a tremolo to the to the guitar. Right. And the pickups get better. Usually, there's different windings in each one. It just depends on the model. Gotcha. All right. Cool. Okay, so we are back, and uh, Adam uh, was kind enough to go grab one of uh, the other series that Legator offers called the Helio. So Adam, take it away. So continuing with our, our patented headstocks, this is our Helio headstock here. Um, kind of it encapsulates, uh, we do a lot of uh, double cut type bodies and a single cut uh, body in this, as well as our, as our hollow bodies and uh, our acoustic lines, which is coming in uh, 2014, will all be encapsulated under this headstock here. Um, what, we like, what we did with this model, um, again, we have a satin neck here. You'll see on all of our, our guitars across the board. Um, we, we put a lot of emphasis, again, into uh, the, the, the neck and the, the heel here. A lot of guitars that you see uh, that are in, with this body shape, you'll have a, a kind of a clunky joint here. You'll see uh, the neck comes to like you know kind right. of a block here, and then what we did is just come through and you know skies all these cuts out. 
which again is you know not the most co cost efficient way to do it, but I mean it's those little little details that you know absolutely really make the difference in the long run. Um, you have a, a mahogany body here with a, a maple top, and then uh, we have a push pull coil tap for these uh, that splits the, the the dual humbuckers that we have. And uh, in all of our guitars, we uh, do a hand wound on eco pickups, and they're all. Uh, manufactured within the same factories that our guitars are built into. So these are all Legator pickups. Right on. And dare I say, uh, so Helio, and I, I hate to mention another guitar company name while we're mm -hmm. at Legator, but the vibe is definitely somewhat you would get from PRS type. Um, the beautiful flame job, just by looking at it, I can tell the thickness of the body is a lot uh, thicker than the Ninja that we looked at earlier, which is more a uh, shredderific type of guitar. This right. gives you a little bit more classical vibe, more vintage okay. rock type of thing. Um, I mean, the body looks absolutely chunky. Mm -hmm. And um, it also has that same beveled top, so you get a lot more tone block in the middle that is thick and nice contour on the backside. Um, the binding looks just as superb. Um, so 200s are made in China, 300 are made in Korea. Right. And judging by the way the back of the headstock, it looks like it's from world music. Or are you not able to uh, divulge? These are from uh, Unsung. Ah, gotcha. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, it's the craftsmanship so far that I'm uh, that I'm looking at just looks really awesome. Um, all right, so we are uh, we, we looked at Helio, so let's now look at Opus. All right, we having fun yet? So we are now back with uh, another series that Legator offers called Opus. So Opus uh, is kind of in the neighborhood of Strat and Telly. So Adam, take it away, show us what you got. These are definitely in the, the Fender spirit here. Um, here we have our, our Opus Tradition 200 series. Um, this is your, your classic uh, Telly type um, guitar with a little bit of a, a modern feel to it with our own pick guard and our own headstocks. Um, you'll see this This is our, actually gonna be our first uh, made in US model here, the Telly type, um, our tradition, traditional model. So as we're talking about this guitar, um, you know, I'm, uh, you know, a lot of you that watch my videos, you know I'm an absolute complete slut for glossy finished maple fretboard, which this guitar has. Um, and I noticed a couple of different things on the construction ride. Adam, you know, show us, uh, show us some unique things about the way this guitar is built. Again, I mean, we thought, like to put a lot of focus on the necks. Um, in our Made in US line, these are going to be 100%, you know, handmade. Um, we put a lot of attention to detail into the cuts, the body cuts, um, and a lot of other guitars that are similar to this type of body. You, you can't access all the way down to, to your higher frets. Um, we want to you know, have the, the full capability to play the guitar to its fullest extent here. And then we like to skythe off the body here so you can really get in there and you know, feel that rather than you know, grabbing onto like a 2x4 or something like that. Yeah, I mean that was immediately apparent to me how they, tr they, they cut away a bit of a body. Not, not, not so much where it would impede on the tonality or the strength of the neck joint but they cut away some right here just enough where it will allow easier access and then the way the back plate is done this uh, curvature right here instead of your traditional rectangular block right here so it's much easier for your hand to get in there so um, yeah I mean it, it, it looks pretty top notch to me I don't know what, what are the uh, what are like the pickup combinations we have here um, this is your standard uh, tell you, you know humbucking uh, your bridge and uh, neck pickups humbucking here humbucking or single oh excuse me because uh, yeah. humbucker could look like a single <laughs> if they're stuck right, right right excuse me yes yeah, so we have our humbucker here and a neck and our single here in, in, in the bridge um, you know these are custom uh, brass uh, legator saddles that we make in our factories once again and your standard uh, uh, volume and tone control and pickup selector here you know what? What I also appreciate is, I mean, yes, the vibe where, where it you you don't get extra credit for guessing what the vibe is from, right? But what I like about it is how they took their own spin at it, because rather than making exact same type of um, replica or what, what whatever you want to call it, the unique design of the pickguard and um, the body shape is a slightly different, and um, the unique at style, which takes a little bit of getting used to. <laughs> Um, it, it looks like a top-notch build, so I'm um, very excited to uh, show you guys this guitar. All right, so uh, we are back. We've looked at the 200s, 300s, uh, and then we looked at all their product line. We've looked at Helio, Opus, Ninja. So Adam, I got a couple of questions for you. 
I've looked at your website and it looks like you don't have, you're, you're not tip, typical, your business model is not typical where you send guitars to Guitar Center and have people buy. Uh, it looks more like you are direct to consumer, which is beneficial. Um, and you do have a couple of dealers, I noticed. So what's the motivation behind going direct to consumers rather than utilize traditional dealership network? I mean, right now, uh, we're actually really expanding our, our retail base. Um, in the past few months, we've actually increased it up to about 17 dealers, and, and that's actually uh, throughout the U.S., uh, mostly concentrated on the West Coast. Um, going direct it was just a, a matter of necessity. Um, you know, as a new brand, it's, it's hard to get into these bigger companies without that demand. But, um, you know, through all of our, our artists who have been really out there touring relentlessly, and, you know, they have a huge fan base that, you know, really looks to them and, a lot of guys take an inspiration from these guys and you know take what they, they play seriously so um, I mean there's, there's a demand out there for it but maybe Guitar Center or Sam Ash and those bigger guys Sweetwater they don't see that yet and uh, you know we just we're not gonna wait for that we're gonna go you know get the guitars in the hands of the people that want them and you know I've I get calls left and right you know all day long if you know how can I get a legacy tour so I mean we, we set it up so we can get get the guitars in the hands of the players Obviously, only downside would be you can't just walk into a store, feel one out, and then make a decision. So I guess that's where you kind of look at my video and kind of see. <laughs> or you could ask John or Matt of uh, Shadows Fall or Greg Trebet from uh, Hell Yeah and Mudvayne. Um, so definitely credibility is there. And then, um, so my, that leads to my next question. Um, I, your 200 series was a below, uh, right around $500 street price, and then comes the 300 series, which is right around a grand mark, maybe uh, give and take 5% or whatever. To me, that is a very crowded space. Right. Every guitar company out there puts out guitars in that price range. That's the sweet spot, really, right? Five to thousand, because anything above thousand is you need a little bit of a uh, horsepower behind your pocket and wallet to get one. And then below 500, you're looking at either lesser quality or you know, made in country of origin that you might particularly not care for, you know, whatever the reason. Or maybe the instrument's grade is a little too low, maybe beginning level, however you might want to feel it. So to me, 500 to 1,000 is very tight, busy, crowded space. What do you, what what does Legator Guitars offer that I can get from another company? What separates you in that crowded space compared to other guys? I mean, if you go and you're able to pick up one of our guitars and compare it to a guitar in the same price range, I know it's probably pretty redundant to say, but ours is just gonna blow theirs out of the water. Um, those attentions to details that I was mentioning earlier, all those neck, uh, you know, the neck finishes and the, the sculpting that we put into the heels and, and the actual neck shape, I mean, that's, it's uh, unparalleled to what these other guys are putting into at that same price range. Um, what you'll see at, at the other competitors' uh, price points, we're usually doing it at the, the lesser price point. You'll, you'll see the same features in a, you know, the competitor's $1,000 range that you'll see in our $500 range. So, I mean, it's like our guitars are on these same levels but a different tier of price I guys. Um, all right, well then, um, you know, that's... 2013. I got to know you in 2013. We're looking at your lineup of 2013. Tell us what you got coming down the pike for next year. Now that uh, you know, it's almost November. Uh, names upon us. I mean, it's that time of the year again. Tell us uh, what you got coming down. Yeah, I mean, uh, 2014 Nam this year. Uh, we'll be debuting. Uh, we work, right now, we're uh, manufacturing and uh, producing our amp line. Uh, we'll have a full line of uh, cabinets and uh, heads, and then we're also working on our acoustic line as well. Um, the big feature that we were proud to announce is our Made in U.S. line. So we're going to have our, our Ninja series and our Opus models available uh, come 2014, 100% uh, Made in U.S. right here in Los Angeles. And uh, when, when the time permits and when, when, when I get invited again, I'll give you guys a tour of the custom shop. Sounds good. Uh, send Adam a lot of emails asking for Triple G visiting the custom shop. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. <laughs> um, all right, and you also have, uh, besides the electric guitar, you're dabbling also into some acoustic line next year, which we'll get to see in them, I'm sure. Yeah, we'll have a few of those out and available to play. Excellent. Well, Adam, thanks for your time. I really appreciate, uh, appreciate the invite. We'll uh, look you up come uh, Winter NAM again, and uh, we'll spend some time with you there, and hopefully we can get to, uh, we, 
we get to visit the custom shop down the street uh, in the near future, kind of show you guys how the guitar is being put together right here in uh, Los Angeles. I mean, it's, it's just super awesome stuff. So uh, until next time, you guys all take care. Peace. Thanks, brother. Rock on. Right in the middle of the shoot, sorry.